I think PFT commenter said it perfectly after the draft. PFT, let's overreact to the NFL draft. I don't do overreactions, but Dan Snyder is the best talent evaluator Guru. in the history of the National Football League. Okay. First, there was the Dwayne Haskins pick, which again, I've beaten to death how much I love Dwayne Haskins. I won't bore you guys with more of that. But he also had this move, trading up to get Montez Sweat in the first round, and it's definitely an interesting move. He's a guy who some mock drafts even had going top five, and while I think that was a little bit ridiculous, he definitely has a ton of talent. He's had solid production, but not just that, he's just a freak athlete. And also, you're going to notice there's going to be some arrows pointing towards Montez Sweat, and that's because I'm actually using this footage from a video I found off YouTube. You're going to see this on some other clips as well, and again, I brought this up in a different video as well, but it's just hard to find good quality footage when it comes to these types of plays. The website where I watch tape on already has very low-res videos, and I don't want to show those on these videos because it's kind of hard to see what's going on sometimes. So I figured I'd take some from YouTube, but now, you know, I have to deal with these arrows. So just in case you're wondering why there's arrows there, that's why. So anyways, one thing I want to bring up is Montez Sweat's football IQ, which can be a little bit lackluster from time to time. Like on this play, basically what's going to happen is that they're going to have the tight end right there in the top half of the screen, run down to the bottom half of the screen, and then they're going to fake a handoff to the top half of the screen, but look at what Sweat is going to do here. Once the ball is snapped, as of right now, he's doing a pretty good job of making sure there's not going to be a run to his direction, which is what you're supposed to do. He probably could continue to move a few steps forward, however, it's definitely not the end of the world. However, even after this point and after it's clearing on a handoff, he still hesitates a little bit longer before finally getting into the play. It's not an awful move by any means, but that hesitation definitely makes it a lot harder for him to try to disrupt things and try to get to the quarterback. Really, if you're sweat, you want to get there quicker. You don't want to hesitate. You want to quickly make a decision. There's also this next play, and what Alabama is going to do is have a zone blocking concept, and it's going to be a run to the bottom half of the screen. The reason why on these videos I always like to show plays against teams like Alabama or Clemson is that those teams are just so good, they're not NFL level, but they're about as good as you can get without being an actual NFL team. I mean, I guess there's also like CFL teams, but Mississippi State didn't exactly play any CFL teams this year. So this is why I'm using this game as an example. So that's clearly on that top half of the screen, as you can see by that arrow, and basically what his job here is to make sure that there's not going to be a run to the top half of the screen. He's going to try to shorten the field, make the field that big basically. So that is something he has to worry about, however he kind of ends up getting caught in no man's land here. Really he should do two things, he should run to the left side of the screen and try to just get to the halfback right away, or he should run straight to the right side of the screen and then try to get to the halfback. Either one would be totally fine just depending on how much he trusts himself, however he's kind of just going to not really do either. He basically just runs straight into the offensive line and now when he's trying to make a tackle it's just way tougher for him to. He's now behind Alabama's halfback and he has to kind of lunge over to try to make a tackle which means that they end up getting a first down out of it. Especially when trying to tackle a guy like Josh Jacobs it's very tough to tackle him from behind and that's what allows him to pick up an 8 yard gain when it could have only been a gain of a couple. He still does end up making a tackle so it wasn't a total disaster however it definitely could have been a lot better from Sweat there. There was also this next play. Basically what Sweat could do on this play is two separate things. He could just run straight into the tackle right there or he could try to run around to tackle. So basically it was a passing play, you try to run around the tackle, and if it's a running play, you kind of try to run to the tackle right over there. So what Sweat's going to do is run through the left side of the screen, but this is actually going to be a running play, so the tackle is going to attack Sweat on this play. He's going to put his right arm right there on Sweat's left shoulder pad. That's the key point of contact here if you're a tackle. Because now, once he does that, and once he's able to latch it on, now Sweat isn't in great position. The left tackle is trying to create a hole in between him and the left guard, and so now that he's doing this, this now is going to make things very difficult for Sweat to try to get over. So Sweat's going to fight to break free, but now he's just in terrible position to make a play. However, this is not a video bashing Montez Sweat. This is a video showing what Sweat does poorly, but also what he does well. So take a look at what number 9 is going to do here. He basically just runs out and gets one arm on the halfback, and that's all he needs to bring him down. Again, far from a perfect play, he still did give up a decent amount of yards, but look at that lunge right there at the end. I mean, that's just a great athletic play. I mean, to be able to run over like that and basically just make an arm tackle is not something you can easily do. He got beat. I mean, straight up, he did get beat. However, it was a great job of coming back after getting beat to not give up a first down and create a third down situation. You're going to get beat, whether it's in college or the NFL, getting beat happens, but it's never too late to come back. That's what they always say in hockey, is it's never too late to come back, and it's true in football as well. You can't have the mindset of, oh man, I got beat, oh well, let's try to make it happen next play. No, you have to give 110% on each play. So what does that, and that's part of the reason why despite having flaws, he's still a clear first round pick. Here's something very similar is actually going to happen. Once again, he's going up against a tackle, this time a right tackle, and it's going to be a run basically straight up the middle this time. 
Once again, a very similar thing is going to happen, and you could look at this as it's a bad thing that Sweat keeps getting beat like this, however, he does want to make sure he can get to the passer. Sweat's main job on a lot of these plays were to try to rush the passer, so occasionally things would open up in the running game because of what he's trying to do, which is get to the passer. However, again, take a look at how he's able to free himself and lunge over and still get into this play. This time, it was a lot more difficult because the run wasn't going to him, it was going further up the field and further away from him, but he's still able to get off his block and basically just dive and make sure he's still able to make that tackle. And again, you know, these plays are not perfect they definitely are not there's definitely some flaws but you know sometimes it's okay to have some flaws in a play if it still results in a short gain if i'm a defensive coordinator i'll take up giving five yards and looking ugly doing it then giving up 15 yards but looking good doing it not that there's a lot of ways to go 15 yards and look good doing it but you know what i mean sweat has a great first step and that's really one of the things that can make him very effective when he guesses right on some of these plays his impact is absolutely felt like on this one it's gonna be a play fake where several different things could happen for alabama first it could be a jet sweep to the top half of the screen and it also could be a run to the bottom half of the screen so sweat has several options that he has to look at here and he's actually the key guy to watch here because he's actually going to get unblocked on this play instead what alabama is going to do is have their right tackle block a linebacker right there and they're going to have their center and left guard double team an interior lineman and then one of them will get off that block and block the other linebacker i left the right guard out and that's because he's going to get pulled over to the bottom half of the screen to try to block someone else and this now means that number nine is left all alone on an island right over there and since it is going to actually be a run to the bottom half of the screen and there is a jet sweep going in that direction this makes a lot of sense to do sweat has to be wary of a jet sweep so he can't really just run straight to the bottom half of the screen and by the time he realizes that it is going to be a run to the bottom half of the screen it would in theory be too late however he's going to read that it's going to be a running play and look at how quickly he's able to get into this play i mean almost instantly he definitely can struggle a bit in the football iq department however that is something you can get better at physically this guy is a beast and when he's guessing right and plays like that i mean it's, he's just unstoppable and i also don't want to sell him short and say he's a dumb guy or anything i'm like on that play he probably just read that play right he probably figured okay they're not actually going to run a jet sweep here and leave me unblocked why would they do that he saw that he was getting left unblocked and saw that there was a fake jet sweep and figured okay it's probably just going to be a run to the other side of the screen so i'm just going to go straight after the halfback one other thing i've noticed about sweat and it's another negative i know i keep harping on the negatives i will get to some positives in a second but i feel like he does kind of lack some creativity sometimes like on this one he's going to be on the left side of the screen going up with the right tackle and take a look at what's going to happen so first off what do you do if you're a tackle well i've said it a million times so say it with me you put your right arm on that left shoulder pad and you put your left arm on that right pec that's what you want to do so what's sweat gonna do to try to get around that well he's gonna do a very small wiggle to try to get away from that and that's just not gonna work at all i mean sweat does now have his left arm a little bit free and he's actually gonna be able to break off pretty quickly but that's still not gonna end up doing too much because now the tackle can simply just get his right arm around him and get his left arm around him and now we can just push him behind his quarterback really that one little wiggle just wasn't enough on that play it's just not so that's a strong guy and he has pretty gnarly footwork so he doesn't have to be making those types of decisions it almost seemed like he tried to make a move just for making a move's sake and it was just kind of pointless really this play in my opinion is a negative and here's why basically the way it's going to start it's going to be a run to the top half of the screen and sweat is actually going to get left unblocked here since it is a run to the top half of the screen for Alabama, this play is actually going to work to a T. Once the ball is snapped, Sweat is going to basically just hang out there in the bottom half of the screen and wait for something to happen. He wants to make sure that no run goes in that direction. However, once again, he kind of just waits too long before realizing what happens here. I mean, we've seen how fast Sweat can move and how quickly he can lunge over to make a play. If Sweat figured this out quicker, he could have easily run over and gotten through the play. However, it just took him a while to figure out what was going on. By the time he finally does start to run over, he just takes himself out of the play. So it's just not a great play by Sweat. Not an awful play by Sweat, but that's kind of why I'm showing it. With the amount of talent this guy has, he should be tearing offenses apart, and he kind of isn't there a lot of just because of what's between the ears. He makes mental mistakes, and really, he's going to have to get that coached out of him, and I think he probably could, though. Again, that's kind of one of those things where it's like you don't always want to draft the most polished player. You want to draft the guy who has the biggest potential. Potential. Especially in this past draft when it was so deep in defensive linemen, there was definitely more polished players than Montez Sweat available, but I'm not so sure how many players were still on the board by the time someone took him that still had that much potential. And speaking of what he can do well, take a look at this play for example. Basically, he's actually not even supposed to be in this play. His job on this play is to move right there and force that tackle to have to go to the bottom half of the screen. That's Montez Sweat's whole job on this play. Because they're going to be blitzing, meaning that linebacker is going to run around the tackle to the top half of the screen over there. However, one kind of nice thing 
thing about this, if you look at Sweat, is it kind of frees things up for him to go inside to tackle. This is kind of a perfect situation to have Sweat in. Don't make him think, just have him run straight forward. That right tackle, who's expecting something to go to the right side of the screen, is not in great position to make a block, and Sweat just runs right by him. While he is the kind of guy that allow a tackle to get good hand placement on him pretty frequently, you can't afford to have bad hand placement. He has some definite strengths and weaknesses, but one of his strengths is strength. You can't push a boulder with just one arm, and Sweat is definitely a boulder on these types of plays. There's also this play, where it's going to be a run basically straight up the middle, and once again, Sweat is going to be left unblocked here, as a tackle is going to be blocked that interior lineman instead. So this not means that typically Sweat would just run like there, right? He'd go around a tackle and then try to get to the quarterback. However, since he is getting unblocked, he's going to do something very smart here. He's going to run very much closer to the bottom half of the screen than he initially would on a typical play. He realizes that his run is going to the bottom half of the screen, so he's running over in that direction. This is what you have to do in these types of plays, and when he makes the right read, he is just so unstoppable. He rushes over and makes a great tackle and only allows for a one yard pickup. So really just a great play by Sweat. That's why he was drafted, because him at his full potential is elite level talent. This play will probably better show why he was drafted. If you take a look, he's going up against the right tackle right there. And so of course, what do you do if you're a tackle? Well, you want to get your right arm right there on Montez Sweat's left shoulder pad, and then you want to get your left hand right there, right on that pad. However, Sweat has that great first jump. He is a very fast guy, and he's able to really get in great position just after one step. And that's kind of why I was so negative to that one weird wiggle right there, because when he did that in that last play, it kind of allowed the tackle to get in position. If he just does this very frequently, it makes it very tough for a tackle to get in position. Now you're in desperation mode if you're a tackle. You have to get both your arms on Sweat and try to push him past your quarterback. However, that's really tough to do because Sweat is a really strong guy. I mean, he's like a rhino running through there. He barely gets moved at all and is quickly able to get to the quarterback for a sack. I mean, that is just an incredible athletic play. So for all those negatives I talked about in the beginning, I think Redskins fans might have been biting their nails, but after watching that play, they'll definitely take a sigh of relief realizing, okay, this guy can play. He has some flaws and actually probably came off a little bit more negative than I was intending to because I actually do like this pick despite all the negative things that I said. I think this guy's talent is off the charts. His football IQ needs some work, but it's also it's not like he's just a complete knucklehead. I mean, I showed just as many plays where he did the right thing as where he did the wrong thing, but just to be an elite level player, you're going to have to do the right thing 99% of the time instead of 70% of the time.